Now, when it comes to travel nursing, I'm the biggest advocate there is. As a travel nurse, you have the power to take back control and be the driver on your own professional journey. As a travel nurse, you get the freedom of flexibility, increased income, and you get to work anywhere around the country that you want, and sometimes around the world. But there's an aspect of travel nursing that not many people talk about. An aspect of travel nursing that you're ultimately gonna have to find out through your own trial, error, and experiences. But in this video, I'm here to put you on game to the realities and obstacles that you could face as a travel nurse before even getting into the game. What's going on family welcome back to the channel my name is tyron tyson best known on the streets as the urban nurse and you are now tapped into the number one channel for healthcare hustlers and entrepreneurs like myself now when we think about travel nursing especially the image that a lot of these influencers on social media portray we think about six figure salaries vacations traveling the country traveling the world you know just the overall good time but you got to understand at the end of the day travel nursing is a business and in this business, you are work for hire. And there are some aspects within this business that a lot of travel nurses don't tell you about. Just like anything with social media, it's a highlight. They'll show you all the good, but never show you the bad. But I wholeheartedly feel like it's my duty as a travel nurse to put you on game so that you don't put yourself in a bad position and instead of making money, end up costing yourself money. Now COVID put travel nursing on the map and gave it exposure that it normally never gets. During COVID, we were getting astronomical numbers. I mean, numbers that you've never heard of making as a nurse. It was just one of those things where you had to be there to experience it. I feel like this caused a lot of people to leave their staff job and jump into travel nursing. And once you start traveling and get a little taste of that money, it's impossible to go back. I mean, imagine making four to $6,000 a month to making six to $8,000 a month. And along with lifestyle creep, a lot of people just end up can't afford them to go back to being a staff nurse. Let me just get it out of your head now. Those COVID contracts and those COVID numbers are dead. I mean, far gone. Now, you might find something out there where you making close to it like five to 8K a week, but you're gonna be working like a damn slave. I mean, to death, 60 hours plus a week in order to get that. And I really just don't think that's worth it at the end of the day. So here we are in the post-COVID phase of travel nursing, but we're also in a post-COVID economy. So we're back to making less money, but cost of living has gone through the roof because of inflation. So we're making more money, but cost of living has gone up and the things around us are costing more. I mean, when the last time you went to the grocery store, eggs like $9, I mean, <laughs> I mean shit is crazy. So essentially, you're not keeping as much money as you're making because things are costing more. That leads me into my first point oversaturation of the industry i mean everybody and their mother trying to become a travel nurse now everybody's leaving their staff job and jumping into the travel game you got new grads doing as little as nine to 12 months and then applying for their first assignment now i don't knock it but i also don't advise it you can never be too careful you have your already career travelers who gonna live and die by a contract and never go back to being staff and then you have those that are using travel nursing as a bridge to help support themselves and pay for their advanced degree. Now with this oversaturation, that gives travel agencies the power to set their rates at whatever they want and essentially take a larger cut of the pie. Why? Because if your ass don't take this contract, somebody else will. And this is simple as that, because nine times out of 10, if the contract ain't enough for you, the next person who gonna take it is probably double what they were making at their staff job. Now, with such an overabundance of travel nurses within the pool, facilities are now dropping rates and canceling contracts whenever they meet their senses. Why? Because like I said, at the end of the day, it's about the bottom line. And these institutions are gonna do whatever they gotta do in order to keep more money within their pockets. Now let's set the record straight here. Just because you're signing a contract does not mean it's a legally binding document that these facilities have to follow the terms and condition of that contract that you sign. These facilities will cut your rate in half at moment's notice, then look at you and ask you what you gonna do about it. You got the option to stay and keep getting paid, or they are gonna send you right on about your way and you're gonna be at home trying to find your next contract, which probably gonna be about three to four weeks before the next start date. In my personal experience, I've had my rate cut three times within one contract and I couldn't do a damn thing about it because I need to get paid and pay my bills. And to make matters even worse, you got facilities out here canceling contracts. I mean, 
before you even start. Sometimes a week until you start it. Like imagine packing up, traveling across country, all the expenses that come along with that for you to be one week into your contract and the facility say, ah, we don't need you anymore. You can go about your business. It's like, damn. But that's just the reality of the gamble that you're taking. And you know what they say, don't hate the player, hate the game. I mean, even the recruiters will tell you. I mean, check this message out that I received from one of my recruiters when I asked, how guaranteed is this rate that y'all telling me? Because it's high, but it seemed a little too good to be true. Like they gonna reel me in and then when I get there, they gonna cut my contract or they gonna cut my rate and I ain't gonna be able to do nothing about it. But lastly, these facilities done wised up and they trying to get their get back after COVID and they cutting out the middleman altogether. So now hospitals are creating their own internal agencies in order to cut out travel agencies so that they don't have to pay them for their nurses. And for the agencies that they are working with, they're limiting nurses to only two contracts and then they gotta go. And as a businessman, at the end of the day, I get it. Why pay a travel agency $200 an hour for them to pay their nurse $80 an hour when you could just cut out the middleman altogether, go directly to the nurse and say, check this out. I'm gonna pay you $95 an hour and you can come work for me directly. Now, from the nursing perspective, it sounds good. You making more than you would have made with the agency, but now you're essentially a staff nurse again. You're working as an internal traveler, but you also plan under this facility's rules. Rules, for example, the current facility that I'm on contract with, they have an internal agency where they are paying $95 an hour, but it's straight pay. Straight pay meaning if you work any amount of hours over time, over 40, it's not time and a half. They still gonna just pay you $95 an hour straight. Then they're going as far as only limiting you to four contracts, meaning you only have a year time frame to work with them. Then they either force you to become a staff nurse or you got to go back on about your business and find another agency. I mean, they get real strict with it. With benefits, you can only have you and a dependent. You can't have a spouse on. When it comes to latenesses, you know, as a travel nurse, you kind of can just do your own thing and, and your agency kind of has to deal with it and reprimand you. Now you're working for this facility again. They like, listen, you only get three times to be late. Then we cut in your contract and you gone. Like the rules are way more stricter and tighter than if you're working for a third party and you have somebody representing you versus still working under that institutional umbrella. I mean, as a travel nurse, this is the times we live in. It's got its ebbs and flows, its peaks and valleys. You got times where contracts are plentiful. You got times where it's hard to get a contract. You got times where rates are up and you got times where rates are down. I'm here to just tell you, Travel nursing is not for the weak hearted. You either gonna sink or swim. And a lot of these things are inevitable. Like you just have no control over it and you can't really do much about it. I would rather you be aware and prepared for these possibilities than to be blindsided and just be kind of lost in the wind and not to know what your next move is. So now that you know a little bit about the game, you have the option to stay within the comfort and security of your staff job or hop off the porch come out here in the wild and run amongst the wolves and make some money your choice listen so if you enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend especially if they're a nurse and keep tapping in i see you when i see you